Affinity Photo is Photoshop's best known and most powerful competitor. Now, I've been using Photoshop for 30 years. I've been using Affinity Photo for 30 days. But even in that short amount of time, I have developed several insights into why this software exists and who it's for. I'm going to start with what I consider to be the number one advantage of Affinity Photo over Photoshop. Yes, there are such things, and that is non-destructive transformations all the time without the need for a smart object. And so here I am looking at a flat JPEG photo from the Dreamstime Image Library, link in the description. As such, we have a flat background here inside the Layers panel, so I'll unlock it. That way I can work on the layer. Notice right here, it's a pixel-based layer. Nothing special about it whatsoever. I'll switch to the Move tool, which has the same shortcut it does in Photoshop of the V key. Notice up here in the Options bar, it's actually called the Context Toolbar in this program, we have a resolution of 300 pixels per inch. Fair enough. Now I'll reduce the size of the image while pressing the Control key, Command key on the Mac, so that I'm scaling with respect to the center. And I want you to see that we have a much higher resolution value. This is an effective resolution, by the way, of 3,400 pixels per inch, meaning that the pixels are still there. But are they really? If I switch to the Zoom tool, which I can get by pressing the Z key just as in Photoshop and crank this guy up, we can see the pixel grid and then just a bunch of big blocky pixels which were this Photoshop would mean that we just rewrote every single pixel inside the image which is a very destructive modification but this is not Photoshop so I'll just go ahead and grab the move tool once again and I will scale the image while pressing that control key command key on the Mac and I have just reinstated every single pixel still not impressed we'll hold on to your socks as I once again reduce the size of the image not quite that much this time but I do have an effective resolution of 687 pixels per inch at which point the image is quite hazy. In Photoshop, I would apply the single dehaze slider and the camera raw filter. Here inside Affinity Photo, I'd go up to the filters menu and choose haze removal, which is a destructive filter, by the way. It has three sliders, so a lot more control as well as a split view. How cool is that? Click apply, and I have now rewritten every single pixel in this layer, albeit at a higher effective resolution. Notice that, which means that I can go ahead and very easily reinstate the image to its original size. Now, I'd love to report that everything works out this well, but sadly, that's not the case. Let's imagine, for example, that you are an experienced Photoshop user, and the kind of thing you do on a regular basis is apply camera raw filter to a smart object to achieve editable results. Well, that experience is greatly diminished here inside Affinity Photo. So I'll go ahead and create a new document, and then I'll go to the file menu, choose place, and select that same JPEG image we were working with a moment ago. Check out these awesome snapping controls. They're so great inside this software. I end up with an image layer this time, which is a lot like a smart object in Photoshop. However, if I go up here and apply the develop persona, personas are like workspaces, their use cases, if you will, then I get this alert message that's trying to tell me that I need to rasterize the layer, which means I won't achieve editable results, which means forget about that noise. And so I'll return to the file menu, choose place. What I have to do is select a raw image to start with. So I'll start with this DNG right here. Once again, I get the excellent snapping controls. I'll go ahead and nudge this image up a little bit. And then I'll either click on that develop persona or develop image. Either way, I get something that doesn't really look like camera raw, but it is a lot like it. I've got the saturation control vibrance as well. So I'll crank those guys up. I've got a white balance tool, by the way. And so I can click to sample a single pixel or I can press the Alt key option on Mac and I can drag to sample many pixels or I can manually override the temperature and tint values, which are, they behave exactly like they do inside of both Camera Raw and Lightroom, by the way. Now I want to take the exposure value down. If I press the down arrow key, it goes too far, which is really clunky. Instead, you press Control down arrow. Here on the PC, that's Option down arrow on the Mac, so the keys don't always work out the same. And I'll go ahead and take up both the black point and brightness values. And now I'll click on Develop, and you can see I have a special kind of object here called a raw image, which means I can double click on 
on this thumbnail in order to regain access to these, those exact same numerical values. Problem is that I had to start off with a raw image in the first place. But if you start with JPEG tip for ping, forget about it. Now let's say I wanna take this scary dude right here and I wanna mask him against this new background. Now where masking is concerned, Photoshop is the best. It's got all kinds of different controls, including the new AI function, select subject and remove background. However, Affinity Photo does have some tricks up its sleeves. And so I might grab this guy right here, the selection brush tool, which which is pretty much the same as the quick selection tool inside Photoshop, only it doesn't advertise itself as being quick, which is great, even though it was pretty quick in this case. And then I'll just go ahead and paint in this area. If you end up selecting too much, then you can just alt or option drag in this ear, for example, just as you might inside Photoshop. Now I wanna select him instead of the background. So I'll click invert selection. Next, I want to refine the selection. In Photoshop, you have to bring up the select and mask workspace which would be a persona in this software instead you click refine and you just get a dialogue box isn't that so much nicer the way it used to be in photoshop i'm going to switch it to transparent so i can see the background and now notice my cursor is a brush which means i can paint in order to refine the selection like so and so i could paint in his beard all over the place and then when i'm done i'll change output to mask and click apply in order to apply that selection as the layer mask here inside the layers panel. Now what you would want to do is go to the file menu and choose save as. You can export your images as PSD documents, by the way, it's complete with layers. However, I recommend you get in the habit of using the native AF photo format because among other things, you can save history along with the document, which is not something Photoshop can do. And either you think that's amazing or not, what you can't do Notice there is no revert command in this menu, so you can't revert to the save version of the image. What you have to do instead is mess around here inside the history panel. The cool thing is you do have this slider, but that is not the same as a good old fashioned revert command. And by the way, if you're finding this helpful, definitely subscribe because one of the things I have planned for the future is Affinity Photo versus Photoshop on the iPad. And I assure you, that is a different cage match entirely. All right, now let's turn our attention to one of the most popular retouching features in Photoshop, the liquify filter, which is where things get very gnarly indeed. So if at any point you entertain this hopeful notion that Affinity Photo would be more more streamlined, easier to use in Photoshop. This is where that hope goes to die. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing. This is a very powerful piece of software, so it's bound to be complicated as well. So I want you to see that this is an image layer. And I was saying that's kind of analogous to smart objects inside Photoshop. And so if I were to go up to the typical location, liquify persona up here in the toolbar and click on it it's expecting to apply a static effect to a pixel layer so it's going to ask you to rasterize before proceeding that's a bad idea you don't want that you always want to apply liquify as a dynamic effect so you can change your mind in the future which is why what you really do is you go to this innocuous little icon right here live filters and click on it and it brings up one of the most joyful menus in any piece of software. This is awesome. These are all dynamic filters, by the way. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and choose Liquify. And that takes us to the Liquify Persona, the workspace, at which point I can do anything I want. For example, I'm gonna paint this guy's face inward, which is gonna look ridiculous. I know it's not in good taste. However, it is going to be very educational as we'll see in just a moment. Now, one of the things this filter lacks is face aware options. The face aware options that we have in Photoshop where you can modify the eyes and the nose and the mouth and the, the width of the face and that kind of stuff automatically. And I miss those controls, by the way. I wish they were here because what I need to do if I wanna make this guy smiles actually kind of lift his mouth manually 
which gives him a very disquieting appearance. And then if I wanted to make his eyes bigger, notice we have these tools over here. Hey, real quick, Affinity Photo is an enormously powerful and complex piece of software. So not surprisingly, I am just skimming the surface. If you want to deep dive a little bit, and believe me, if you're seriously considering switching away from Photoshop, you definitely want to deep dive, then join my Patreon, which is patreon.com slash deeknow. Punch or pinch, actually, I'm reading that wrong, and punch. And they're analogous to bloat and pucker, by the way. So punch makes things bigger, which doesn't make any sense to me, the title, but it does make sense in terms of how it works. Works great. And so you can drag around, you know, to make his eyes bigger. And then when you're done with your super duper effect, click done and you have applied the effect dynamically. And notice it appears here inside the layers panel. And so if you wanted to make a change, you would just click on that icon right there and you'd be right back in that liquify persona. Once again, I'm gonna click done to escape out and I'm gonna twirl this layer open so you can see it now contains these items. And so this is kind of analogous to a clipping group inside Photoshop, but it's much more than that. And in, in, in a way, I think it's like you're grouping the effects into the layer, which I think makes a lot of sense from just a UI perspective. And so I could grab this liquify effect that's now in here with the layer mask and I could drag it onto the layer mask. Notice that just applies liquify to the mask and not to him anymore. See the difference, his ears disappear. That's why I squished his face by the way. Or you could drag it down so it just applies to the image and not to the mask at all which just gives you so much control. That's not what I want. I want it to apply to both. So I'll just drag it back up. But these things are so great. These live filters right here that I devote more energy to them in case you're curious at my Patreon. Now I am gonna share with you one more insanely great feature by the way, but first kind of as an aside, there's so much to this software. For example, the healing brush includes a dynamic patch tool. We don't have a dynamic patch tool in Photoshop. It's static, it permanently modifies pixels. And so if you want me to delve deeper into this very powerful piece of software, just let me know, comment below, subscribe, all that jazz. I will say what's missing from the healing functions inside Affinity Photo is generative fill. There is no generative AI whatsoever but there is what I'm about to show you. So I'm gonna turn off this dude who's getting just unpleasant at this point, and I'll go to the file menu and choose place and bring in this fluffy cloud and take advantage of the wonderful snapping function right there. Click to place it. Now, those of you who are, I, I would say advanced Photoshop users, you know that there are the blend if sliders. For example, this layer, underlying layer, which would allow you to drop out this sky. We have that in Affinity Photo, only it's better. I'll click on this gear icon right here to bring up the blend options. And notice, even though they don't look like they're the same thing at all, they're curves instead of sliders, which is much better. And we've got the source, which is this layer, and then underlying. Now I wanna drop out the blue, so I'm gonna change the channel to blue right there. And then I'll drag this over so we can see what we're doing. And I'll drag this guy down. And that removes the blue sky and over, and that gets rid of more blue sky. And you can not only drop out shadows and highlights, but mid-tones this way. You can drop out anything you want. And I could add a point at this location and move it up, and that would be kind of a linear transition, or I could turn off linear and make it a curve, if that's what I'm looking for. And then once I'm done, I wish I had an OK button. That's, that's kind of a problem throughout the software, but I'll just close out, that works. And you may wonder, well, did I just permanently modify this layer? I did not. I'm gonna click on the gear icon once again, and it looks as if it did remember my settings, but I gotta change the channel back to blue, and there they are, and that means now I can move this out of the way, and then I can drag this around anywhere I like, and I can move this over if I want to, and once again, close out or do absolutely anything that you like. Wow, I ended on a kind of high note. So you may wonder, am I seriously thinking of trading Photoshop for Affinity Photo? No, I am not. Select subject, face aware, liquify, generative, fill, the revert command. I cannot live without these things. But will I continue to use Affinity Photo for another 30 days? Try and stop me. But what really counts is what you think. Comment, correct me. 
Tell me if you want more. And then subscribe and turn on notifications. And what the heck? Give me a like. And for a deep dive, especially designed for experienced Photoshop users, join me at patreon.com slash deke now. And then go to deke.com and sign up for my newsletter. I'm Deke McClellan. This is Deke Now.